The U.S. is facing a European firestorm with the region's debt crisis threatening to wreak havoc on our economy. Fed Chief Ben Bernanke said the Fed is prepared to protect from the possibility of contagion. Take a listen. The situation in Europe poses significant risks to the U.S. financial system and economy and must be monitored closely. As always, the Federal Reserve remains prepared to take action as needed to protect the U.S. financial system and economy in the event that financial stresses escalate. Okay, fine. But realistically, does the Fed have any action left to take or is Bernanke out of bullets? In today's Reganomics, I'm asking, can the Fed save us from Europe? Joining me right now from Reno, Nevada, Jerry O'Driscoll, former Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas Vice President, and in Washington, D.C., Martin Bailey, former Council of Economic Advisors Chairman. Welcome to both of you. Gentlemen, uh, you know, Bernanke says he can help save us from Europe. Jerry, do you buy? By that, can he? Well, he can help insulate our banking and financial system from a, a, potentially a collapse in at least some European countries, and because our banks are exposed, so we can provide liquidity. Do you agree with that, Martin? Do you think that the Fed can really actually insulate us and help protect us from a banking contagion that starts in Europe that could potentially spill overseas to us? Well, not completely, because uh, obviously it affects the the psychology of both financial markets and, uh, we, you know, we have a lot of businesses that are heavily invested in Europe and, and rely on Europe for a good part of their returns. What they can do is provide currency swaps and, and other facilities so that the European Central Bank itself can step in and help, uh, they can help their own European banks. And then if things do get worse in Europe, which they may do, uh, as Jerry said, provide liquidity and, and lending uh, as a lender of last resort to our banks and financial institutions so that they're not actually caught short. Okay. Most of us, most of the banks, though, have already um, moved away, I think, from holding a lot of European assets. But part of this isn't just what they're holding, right? At the end of the day, a lot of it boils down to psychology and investor psychology, and people start to pile on because if they're worried about, uh, if they're worried about Greece leaving and then Spain leaving and then potentially Italy leaving and banking collapses in each of these countries, at some point that psychology would it not, Jerry, spill over into the U.S. banking system? Yeah, it's on a, we, we can't avoid exposure. Both, either directly or indirectly. Look, a lot of U.S. domiciled corporations do a substantial part of their business in Europe. General Electric, Caterpillar, the list of multinationals. Mm -hmm. Their profits are going to go down. Uh, so oh, but you're talking about something that that slightly different, and I, I just want to mention that nuance here. You're talking about the real economic fundamentals of what's happening in Europe having an impact here on us, correct, Jerry? Yes, but I think psychology ultimately is responding to fundamentals. If people flee all European banks, it's because they have an expectation that if some of them have bad assets, then perhaps others have bad assets, a kind of Lehman stampede. Martin, could a Lehman stampede, uh, in part because of the psychology of investors, um, be a scenario that takes place here in the U.S. again? In other words, might we see a repeat of 2008 if things begin to spiral out of control in Europe? Well, it's possible. Uh, I, I don't think so. I actually think the Europeans are are going to sort of hold it together. I don't know if Greece is going to stay in, in the euro, but I think they will work very hard to, invo to avoid that contagion spreading to other, other parts of Europe, and maybe they will even hold uh, Greece inside the fold. But so I don't think expect that to happen uh, to the U.S. But you know we've had our fingers burned, and 2008, 2000 was was really a wake-up call for how precarious our financial institutions are. I think they've been strengthened, and I think we've learned how to deal with it. But it would be the sort of second hit, and, and so we're already facing a relatively weak economy and institutions, some of which are still a little bit weak in themselves. Jerry, you're former Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas vice president. Um, walk me through what you would do if you were in Mr. Bernanke's shoes today. Well, uh, I think he's got to watch and wait. Uh, I think U.S. financial institutions know how to, they know how to provide liquidity here. The problem in Europe, and let's take Spain, 
uh, their banking system was heavily exposed to property uh, lending and to, um, you know, mortgage lending on homes. It's very reminiscent of the savings and loan crisis in the 1980s. They're not just short of liquidity, they're possibly insolvent. And that's an entirely different problem. That's going to require a massive bailout and the Spanish government doesn't have the money. Doesn't have the money. Um, so, no. so, so what do you do if you're Ben Bernanke and you're trying to protect the U.S. economy and the U.S. banking system? What well, your first first line of defense is to protect the U.S. banking system and to provide whatever lending is necessary. As Martin said, lender of last resort, mm -hmm. lend on all assets in the U.S. banking system. How much they can do to help Europe if it's a solvency problem is very limited. Um, you know, somebody people are talking about a Marshall Plan. Well, we we don't have the money for a Marshall Plan anymore. Mm -hmm. QE3, are we going to see it, Martin? Uh, I don't think so, uh, unless we did get the disaster scenario. Uh, I think it's more likely they will continue, or Bernanke said they will continue with Operation Twist, buying uh, longer-term securities to try to help keep down uh, long interest rates. Um, but I don't think we'll see QE3 unless we really are, are starting to uh, deteriorate and the economy starting to deteriorate. Do you think that the market, uh, and I'll ask you an investing question here, Martin, do you think that the market was starting to realize that today and perhaps that's why we saw a sell-off? I mean, yesterday there were all these hopes that central bankers around the world would continue pumping tons of liquidity into the system. We saw nearly a 300-point gain on the Dow, the biggest gain of the year. We were up much of the day, triple digits here today, but we did see a sell-off in the last hour of trading. Can you attribute that at all to concerns and fears that perhaps the Fed, one, doesn't have enough bullets left, and two, may not be, uh, may not be enacting QE3 in the near future? Well, maybe a little bit. I think it was, it, it's really more well, you know, the ups and downs are hard to call, uh, the, the short-run psychology. Uh, but I think there may have been today a little bit of saying, well, we got excited because Angela Merkel seemed like she was warming up. She was more ready to try to prevent problems in Spain of the, of the kind we just talked about, to bail out the banks. And now they're sort of thinking, well, maybe, maybe she will, maybe she w won't. And, and so they got a little bit of uh, remorse, although the market pretty much went sideways in the, in the end today. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Jerry O'Driscoll, former Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas Vice President, and Martin Bailey, former Council of Economic Advisors Chairman.